Bigfoot ripped the head off of a bull. Depending on what part of the world you're in, an eight to nine foot bipedal hairy giant goes by many names. In many places, he's known as Bigfoot or Sasquatch. Specific to the Northwest United States, he's also known as Skookum. In the Himalayas, he's the Yeti. And in the southeastern part of the United States, he's called the Skunk Ape. This story was initially submitted to Sasquatch Chronicles and tells a story from more than 40 years ago. Visit SasquatchChronicles.com for more information about this and other Bigfoot sightings and encounters. It was the summer of 1974, and I was a 12-year-old from New York visiting my sister and her husband and son in Davie, Florida. My cousin was 15 at the time. This was in the days before video games, so we did a lot of playing outside, riding our bikes all over trails behind the house and hiking around. It was a hot and dry July, and I remember somebody saying later that the water levels in Lake Okeechobee were lower than they had been. There were a lot of houses being built at the time too, apparently, which I didn't care about at the time, but those two things have been posited as reasons for the many skunk ape sightings in Florida in the 1970s. Anyway, now for my particular encounter. One night, after playing outside for most of the day, my cousin and I were getting ready to go to sleep on the pull-out couch in the sitting room, when we smelled something <laughs> awful. It was like a skunk, only worse. I asked my sister what it was. She said fairly nonchalantly it was the skunk ape, and he comes around in the hottest summers. I didn't believe her. I thought they were just having fun with the kid from New York and trying to scare me a little. So I asked our friends that we played with the next day about it, and they said it was real. A couple of nights later, we were watching television in the sitting room, and we were about ready to go to bed when we saw a huge shadow come across the picture window. I pulled open the curtain to see what was the cause of the shadow. About ten feet or so from the window, there was this creature, ape-like, and looking right at the window. I don't know if it saw me, or maybe it saw its reflection in the window, but the creature let out this blood-curdling scream that scared me to death almost, but I didn't want to take my eyes off of it. As it was screaming, I saw that it kind of flexed, like a bodybuilder might. There was a six-foot chain-link fence that went around the perimeter of the house, and this thing was on the other side of it, and about three feet taller than that fence. After that, it turned and walked to the side of the house. We moved to another part of the house so we could see what it was doing. It started toward this pond that was behind the house. On the way, he, or she, or how about it, picked up a wild watermelon and was holding it and eating it like I would an apple. There were exterior lights on and we could see it pretty well as it kept walking towards the pond. It had blackish or brownish hair and this thing really was huge with really broad shoulders. It walked on two legs like a human would, but it had these really long arms that hung down past its knees. It looked like it weighed a thousand pounds, but it was hard to tell. When it made it to the pond, it squatted down again and drank some water, but it never took its eyes off of the house. It was like it was aware of us watching it, that was eerie. After having its drink of water, it continued down a trail that we rode our bikes on in the daytime and disappeared in the woods. I did not sleep well that night, to say the least. Two, or maybe three nights later, the beast reappeared a few streets over at a rancher's house. The skunk ape attacked a horse in its corral, but the horse got away by jumping over the corral and running off into the pasture. The rancher came out and took a few shots at the beast, but it got away. When the horse came back, it had these marks on its hindquarters. Not scratches, but finger marks. My sister and brother-in-law had gone out for the evening and were pulling back into the neighborhood shortly after the rancher had fired his shots. A deputy patrolling the area stopped them on their way to the house, informing them there had been a skunk ape sighting and to be on the lookout. 
My brother-in-law came by the house to pick me and my cousin up and drive us around the neighborhood to look for it. We were following the deputy as he was cruising through the neighborhood. All of a sudden, the creature runs out into the street and was hit by the deputy's car. We saw the whole thing. The skunk ape got up and was limping a little. It was angry. It balled up its fists and slammed them on the hood of the patrol car, lifting the rear end of the car off the ground. It screamed again and then ran off into the woods towards a swampy area. But maybe the craziest thing about this whole incident was that the rancher came over to report to the police that his prized bull had been killed. The skunk ape had ripped the head off of the bull. The rancher found it about 100 yards away from the body on the other side of the pasture. This bull was not a small creature. The bull was a monster itself. It was white with a hump in his back, and it must have weighed 2,000 pounds. It was known for being vicious and would charge anyone that got close to its fence. It was big and mean. To rip the head off of this bull, the strength of the creature had to be enormous. After that, state police and sheriff deputies descended on the area with dogs and helicopters, and they searched the area, but they never found anything. I heard about a pony being killed a short time later by what many suspected was the same skunk ape. This was a totally surreal experience, the wildest summer vacation, and without a doubt, the scariest thing I've ever experienced in my entire life. This has been another strange but true story. The Florida skunk ape was widely reported from 1970 through 1975, with newspaper accounts appearing in most of the major Florida newspapers. Many witnesses and law enforcement officers that had encounters spoke of an intense pungent odor like ammonia or horrible body odor. Hence, how the skunk ape earned its moniker. There was also an article in the Wednesday, November 19, 1975 edition of the Palm Beach Post about the Florida skunk ape, with one report of the Hialeah Gardens police chief Ray Bennett claiming to have subdued a small creature that was not human, that he speculated may have been a juvenile skunk ape. The three-foot creature was delivered to Jackson Memorial Hospital but no records have been found of this non-human creature in hospital archives. Visit SasquatchChronicles.com for more stories of true encounters. Additional details for this story were gathered from a Bigfoot research organization investigation into this incident that was verified by many of the original people involved in this story and from the Palm Beach Post, circa 1975. Let us know what you think of this story by leaving us a comment below, and subscribe for weekly videos. Thanks to those who have, it is greatly appreciated. I'm Steve White. Thanks for watching. Until next time.